Hi everybody, it's time again to roll out the red carpet. Join me as we take an exclusive one hour look as we find out what's up, what's hot, and what's happening next here at the Cultural Center of the Philippines. and we're already hitting the eighth month of 2009. But before we totally say bye-bye to July, let's take a look at what happened last month here at the Cultural Center of the Philippines. I'm Cutie Del Mar. This is the Red Carpet. July continues CCP's indie streak as more brave new works come our way. Here's what we have in store for you for the next hour. We have a lot happening on our WhatsApp, from our storytelling sessions to our art installations to music under construction. CCP is truly jam-packed with events sure to satisfy everyone's craving for art. And of course, we'll also give you CCP's schedule of activities for the next month on our What's Next segment so you won't miss out on the activities happening here at the CCP. And for our highlight, for the last four years, July is known for this really, really big event. Yep, we're talking about Cinemalaya Cinco for our What's Hot for July. The website is launched. The advertisements were aired. The promotional short films were uploaded. All the trailers released. Everything is ready for the biggest event in the cultural center of the Philippines. The Cinemalaya Philippine Independent Film Festival. After just five years, Cinemalaya has already achieved worldwide recognition. The idea for the Indie Month is to uh, help young directors, uh, filmmakers, writers, choreographers to present innovative, daring works. Uh, and secondly, to attract more uh, young audiences. So that month of our 40th anniversary is dedicated to our younger uh, audiences. Every year, the Cinemalaya inspires a new crop of filmmakers, and these new filmmakers give every Cinemalaya its unique flavor. Every crop of Cinemalaya films every year is always different from the last one, and we've been fortunate. May improvements sa technicals, sa there's more confidence, more understanding of the by the participants of the directions that Cinemalaya would like to take. I think there are more mainstream actors who are now uh, involved in uh, some of the films, uh, which is a good indication that uh, the mainstream cinema is beginning to notice independent cinema. This year's entries have diverse subject matters. It's about the pawn shop, kaya ganun yung title, Sanglaan. It's about the owner, the appraiser, the people na mga nagsasanla doon, yung mga buhay nila, para mga slice of life. It's about this um, girl na may repressed na emotions due to a past trauma. And yung buong kwento is kung paano niya na-release yung emotions niya by um, parang uh, nag-research siya tungkol doon sa isang tribe. Tapos through her interaction with that tribe, uh, yun, na-release yung emotions niya. Last Supper number 3, ano to, humorous look, so comedy siya, tung, uh, sa uh, legal system natin. Isang assistant production designer, nakawala siya ng Last Supper. Tapos the next two years, he spends it wrapped up in red tape and bureaucracy. So yung question is, kung makukulong siya because of the loss of la the Last Supper na hiniram niya. Behind closed doors, it's uh, basically about relationships um, and infidelities. The, the secrets that we keep behind closed doors, basically. My film, Hulag Pos, is about a little girl named Anjali who has seemingly uncold and unfeeling mother. And this mother is preventing her from going inside the forbidden room. And to, by doing that, parang she makes ano, a myth about the room, which the girl eventually demystifies. So it's basically a demystification of a childhood myth. So the title is Musa, the Muse. So starring Raisa Sinon and Tata Nanding Osep. Um, it's it's poetry and film, so it's a hybrid of poetry and film, so it's actually a performance. Cinemalaya Cinco promises to be as successful as the previous festivals. 
Cinemalaya has become well known not only in the Philippines but abroad as well. Don't go away because I'm going to take you on a cruise when the red carpet returns. crowded during Cinemalaya week. In fact, it is considered the most jam-packed CCP event in terms of audience. And just by word of mouth, its audience reach has been far and wide bringing back foreign film enthusiasts to join in and watch the movies. All aboard! Foreign film programmers representing different film festivals all over the world flocked this year's Cinemalaya. And to showcase their gratitude, CCP took them on a cruise around Manila Bay while partaking a delicious lunch. Having a boatload of foreigners is a good indication that after five years, Cinemalaya has gained enough recognition to be noticed by the international community. They may have come from different countries, but they're all united by one thing their love for Pinoy film. Two years ago, we organized a big uh, tribute to Filipino cinema with uh, more than 40 films and some 60 guests from the Philippines. So we really want to follow the work of young, talented uh, new filmmakers and discover their work and why not select them in uh, our competition. Uh, it's a great surprise and uh, it's always a pleasure to see what kind of amount of creativity and uh, new ideas are around and uh, of course, on what kind of uh, small budget, on a, on a shoestring budget, uh, the, the directors are working. And when you see then uh, what, uh, what comes out, it's double amazing. It's like um, an explosion of, of uh, cinematic creativity. The new generation is very strong. Some of them, like Mendoza. Every time I show Filipino movie in Brussels, they win. They win. Not always, but many times they win. Imagine in 87. In 87, I start, and every year I show Filipino movie. And everybody, everybody who come to see my place, my God, the Filipinos are so good. My expectations are to see who's taking the place of Lino Broca and Ishmael Bernal and Eddie Romero and Mary Luz Diaz Abaya. Who are the new ones? I want to come and find out. I think Cinemalaya is a very unique and a very original concept. This is a huge chance for Pinoy filmmakers to have their films exhibited at foreign film festivals like Cannes. The reason why they're here is basically to look for films that they can include in their respective festivals and competitions. And they are also curious to see uh, what the independent film movement here in the Philippines is all about. Cinemalaya is touted as CCP's most crowded event, and this success could only be attributed to the films themselves. Let's take a breather from the films and attend a storytelling session by respected storytellers not only from the Philippines, but from South Africa as well. Let's find out what's up at the CCP when the red carpet returns. was a castle near the bay, famous the world over for its breathtaking beautiful sunset. The castle is also famous in its own right, as it's dedicated to arts and culture. Then one day, little children from all over the city gathered inside the castle near the sea. I want to because performance ng Alitap Tap. Excited po ako dahil first time ko lang po dito pumunta sa CCP at makikinig po kami ng kwento at manonood pa po ng puppet show. Excited po akong manood ng puppet show dahil bilang bata na 
nakakatulong ito sa akin pag-aaral. Gusto ko makinig ng wento dahil ito ay pampatalino. The castle is the cultural center of the Philippines. And it proves that art and culture is not just for the grown-ups, but for the kids as well, as they didn't forget the chikiting in their first ever festival of spoken word. Entitled Boses Bata, kids gathered at CCP's main theater lobby looking for a good story. And they were not disappointed. A group dedicated to the art of storytelling, Ali Tap Tap, amazed the kids not only with their tales, but with their different styles of storytelling as well. When two storytellers tell the tale, it is called tandem storytelling. <laughs> On the other hand, when a whole group joins together in the storytelling, it is called chamber storytelling. Sa isang storytelling performance, syempre, ang pinakamahalaga doon kung ano bang objective mo, kung bakit ka magpe-perform sa mga bata. So our group, uh, we are promoting storytelling through reading. So if napapansin nyo, nung na-perform kami kanina, we're holding a book. Kasi we want kids to enjoy reading, not only na performance but also reading. Kasi di ba sa ating kultura ngayon ng mga bata, mahilig din naman magbasa ng buka. So, minsan dahil nabobor sila na, na magbasa ng book, nawawala na yung attention. So kami as a storyteller, kami yung kumukot ng attention nila para maging interested sila sa storytelling, sa reading ng book. Ever wondered why the roosters crow during sunrise? If you go to a land where laughing is a no-no, what would you do? These are stories shared by Ali Tap Tap. But the fun doesn't stop there, as the children also got to meet the cute shark, Takao. Ito na. And the Pilio, but very funny, Nonoy. They are the friends of renowned puppeteer, Oni Karkamo. With their help, he brought lots of shining smiles and laughter to the kids. Imagine a world without stories. Life would be unbearable, right? Something has to be done. And Manzanendaba is the woman to do it. She traveled all over the forest and even under the sea in search for stories. Hey, look over here. This is just one with a tale shared by Miss Cena Mlope Becker. Hailing from South Africa, Miss Becker is a renowned storyteller. A product of her country's rich oral tradition and unique history. The vast savanna of South Africa, full of amazing wildlife, serves as the backdrop for her wonderful stories. The storytelling tradition in South Africa, many old people are still telling stories in the countryside, in the rural areas, in the villages. But in the cities, people are losing the art of storytelling. People are focusing on television, people are doing video games, people are doing the internet, and they're doing everything electronic, and the storytelling is behind. And when I do storytelling in these places, people are shocked that they enjoy Sometimes um, a grown-up man comes to me and he's embarrassed. You know what? I can't believe it. I enjoy it myself. He's shocked. But of course, you shouldn't be shocked. It's part of your culture. The fact that you enjoy someone else's culture doesn't mean you must give up on what is yours. So I am glad that there's an audience to tell stories, whether we are in the city or in the countryside or inside South Africa or any other country around the world. The South African Embassy gives kids a treat with a storytelling session by one of their foremost storytellers in a successful effort to share their culture. The people of the Philippines generally don't know too much about South Africa. For us, we're trying to work at different levels, but a very important level for us is to make contact with the people. And we really found that, uh, that culture generally provides that vehicle. 
we've been trying for a number of years now to bring a, performance, a performer or performance group out from South Africa to the Philippines. And we're very pleased that, uh, that, we, that we were successful in getting Ms. Tinam Flope, uh, the former storyteller in South Africa, out here. We thought also that this is a medium, storytelling, where the Philippines and South Africa have something in common. And I think with the first performance we've just seen, uh, I think that is, is proven to be right. They also sang and danced along South African songs, proving that arts and culture could cross national and ethnic borders. The children were just warm and ready to listen from the very beginning. I feel so happy to be with them and they want to sing, they want to participate. They just, it was a joyous performance. It felt like home. Our journey with the Cinemalaya Road continues as we get to take a look at the opening of a big small film festival when the red carpet returns. prestigious dance companies did outstanding performances at the CCP's main theater lobby. These dancers represent the independent filmmaker's voice, spreading his message to the audience. Their dreams and aspirations when they decided to embark on this ambitious project unity and the dedication of the continued rise of free cinema in the Philippines. And with that, the biggest event of the cultural center of the Philippines in terms of audience has begun. Welcome to Cinemalaya Cinco. I think the fact that um, we're five years old, we have a new batch of filmmakers, and I think the films are better this time. Uh, I'd like to think that every year the films get better. Technically, mas magaling din. 